It is a dream 100 years in the making. Now, the National Museum of African American History and Culture is on its way to becoming a reality. Amy Yancey is in D.C. with a sneak peek at the facility. Most of the artifacts are still off site, but the museum's dramatic facade and historic location are a sure sign of what visitors can expect. Standing prominently on the corner of Constitution Avenue and 14th Street, the National Museum of African American History and Culture promises to be a treasure for all. The top of that form is a corona or a crown. And you'll see that this form resembles sort of a three layered uh, crown. The museum has been in the works since 2003 and is part of the Smithsonian Institution. The collection consists of 11 galleries carefully arranged in the 400,000 square foot space. Breathtaking views of the National Mall set the backdrop for a step back in time. Our story starts as early as the early period of 15th century Africa. And we were able to actually get quotes from people from the period, from their narratives, from documents. And so you really will see a more personalized experience. From the horrors of slavery and segregation to the tribulations and triumph of the civil rights movement, the stories of African-American poets, athletes, moguls, and trailblazers all told and celebrated here. There's also some state history here at the museum. This house was salvaged from Poolsville, Maryland. It's where former slaves once lived. From this restored slave cabin to the state-of-the-art Oprah Winfrey Theater, thousands of artifacts show the road to freedom and the future. I think this museum is going to bring people together to talk about issues that are not just about the past. The towering space is a work in progress and a sign of the country's progress a jewel to complete the crown of culture in the nation's capital. The museum will be officially opened in about four months on September 24th. President Barack Obama will be here to cut the ribbon. In Washington, D.C., Amy Yancey, WJZ Eyewitness News. Now, half of the $540 million project was funded by bipartisan support in Congress. The other half is being raised through private contributions. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah. me too.